25 less times than them, unless um, the number is not correct. Let's let's see this. Um, 64, 56, 38 seconds left. Iowa State on top. The turnover differential, 10 for Iowa State in the game. A normal number, 25 for Cincinnati, a season high and four below the record that was set about uh, two decades ago. Overall thoughts, man. Overall thoughts. Um, that was – we've had a lot of frustrating games. That by far was the the most frustrating that we've seen. I mean, just the – the sloppiness of a, of, you know, essentially a must win game and, and not doing, you know, protecting home court, like we've been saying all year, but to come out with, with such a dud and just to be so sloppy and lackadaisical with the basketball, you can't win a game. If you're turning the ball over 25 times, they had 14 in the first half. Um, they had 10 in like the first five minutes of the game just came out uh, with a dud. Um, just really disappointing through and through with the players on the floor, and the coaching staff, just the abominable uh, job all the way around, man. We're doing the show a little differently today as Jizzle James goes in out of control, big, bricks a layup, Dan gets it, um, CMOS, Jizzle, Jizzle 3, Cats need it, they got it. Seven-point game, 24 seconds to go. What are the Houdini metrics that the Bearcats can pull this one out? What are the chances? Oh, uh, We have a 1% shot. One crazy. Okay. I was thinking point oh 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 three, but I guess it's possible. We saw it what was it, Texas A and M, Northern Iowa in the tournament years ago? Um, eight and like fifteen seconds. Yeah, I always yeah, I always think of the Tracy McGrady, the thirteen and like six seconds that he threw out. Now we don't necessarily have Tracy McGrady as we saw today, unfortunately. So uh it might be lower than the one percent, but maybe Jesus they'll they'll James probably end up losing by five. Like they do every game. If they lose by five, I'd rather them just lose by 12. If they lose by five somehow, it'll be a different five because Iowa State's really controlled from start to finish. Um, put Cincinnati away at the end of the first half, and UC was never really able to climb back into it. They'd hit some shots here and there. Um, unfortunately, when they weren't hitting shots, they were turning it over, and they really couldn't stop Iowa State for the large majority of the game as the Cyclones are probably going to end up with about 70. But, yeah, we're doing the show a little bit differently. We got five topics to talk about. The Sloppy Cats, uh, the Monstars got locking, uh, stole his talent. It's unfortunate. Jizzle James, Jizzle's a star. That's in all caps. We'll get into his big performance uh, a little Big 12 update. I don't even know if anyone else is playing around the league tonight. If there is, we'll get into that. And then next up at Central Florida, if this wasn't a must win, that's 1,000% a must win. But um, things are looking bleak right now for Cincinnati. But what I want you to do if you're in the chat room right now, how are we feeling about Wes Miller, folks? We're three... Eh, two and a half seasons in, two and uh, close to three quarters seasons in, and Cincinnati right now is on the outside looking in. If Wes Miller weren't to bounce back this season, Cincinnati was to go, you know, six and twelve in the Big Twelve. How would you feel about him entering next season? Is his seat hot? Is it lukewarm? Are we idiots for even bringing this up? I'll ask you that right out of the gate, Hudson. I'm going to call you Hudson tonight. You don't deserve Houdini. I appreciate that. You know, let's just keep it all professional today. There's nothing. There's nothing fun that happened tonight. There was nothing professional on the players. basketball floor. <laughs> that was amateur. No, there was not. Uh, I mean, I I think next year, uh, as far as this year is concerned, I mean, it, it was an atrocious performance, and a lot of that's going to fall on the coaching staff. A lot of it as well was just on players just making some of the dumbest plays you'll ever see. Just. Stuff you you learned, you know, as a, a fifth grader on the basketball court. You don't pick your dribble up in the corner. Um, when a double team comes, you got to be quick and react and try to pass out of it. We did none of those. Um, we would consistently dribble into a corner. The jump passing, everything under the sun. Um, and a lot of that goes to coaching, too. But, my God, the players didn't uh, help his cause. But, no, I'm not, I, I'm not putting Wes on a hot seat right now. Um, if this happens next year, if we don't get in the tournament, then we can really start talking. But but right now, first year in the Big 12, I'm not doing any of that. Welcome into Chatterbox Bearcats, everyone. It's final. Number 10, Iowa State, comes into fifth third. 
The same team that during homecoming this year came into Nippert Stadium and just shellacked the Bearcats. Boos were raining down on Emory Jones. Boos raining down on every single member of the Cincinnati Bearcats tonight, including their head coach, Wes Miller. 68-59, the final score. The Sarah McLaughlin playing in the background because that was the exact opposite of a thing of beauty. Cincinnati finishes with, let's get the final tally, Houdini, as we were watching this one live, 25 turnovers for Cincinnati. In the first half, they turned it over nearly 50% of their possessions, 43% to be exact. The worst team in the country is averaging a turnover 25% of their possessions. So today for a half, forget the half, for the entire game, Cincinnati played as sloppy as anyone will play in the country all season. Really bad basketball. You're not wrong, man. Um, and not having a veteran point guard has killed us all year, and it it, it showed a lot tonight, man. I mean, Day Day had some really, really bad turnovers. Jizzle did as well, but at least Jizzle had those, you know, offensive moments. Um, and again, he's a fre- only a freshman, so you kind of expect that. But we had some just a- atrocious turnovers, man. Just dribbling, not even being, um, uh, you know, Iowa State did nothing to even cause half of these things. We're just throwing the ball to the other team, throwing it out of bounds, dribbling off our foot. Um, it was uh, pretty bad all around, but not having that that veteran point guard to kind of calm down. And the number one thing you got to do as a point guard is take uh, take care of the basketball. And I think between Jizzle and Day Day, they had like 12 turnovers today. So not what you want to see, man. Does it make you long for Micah Adams-Woods, or is that a little bit of a stretch? This was brought up uh, actually recently at a little little barstool talk, and I said I absolutely would would take Mike Adams Woods as a backup guy because the one thing he didn't do he wasn't uh, sloppy with the basketball. He had his moments, but at least he, you know, we we had what Day Day had six turnovers, Jizzle had five. Reverse you can't that. win basketball games. No, no, you're you're right. Six and five. Yep. Oh no, I'm ne- I'm never wrong. Yeah, six and five. Um, I, Mike Adams Woods had his had his issues. Don't get me wrong. I think he's averaging like 15 right now at St. Bonaventure, um, but that was never kind of his game, especially in the Big 12. But you need somebody that can hold on to the basketball. I mean, a couple of them. Day Day just forgot how to dribble. Jizzle even forgot how to dribble on a couple of them. So, um, and nobody else is really helping their cause either. I mean, Aziz had four turnovers. Um, almost any time you give him the ball he forgets how to stand almost. He just falls over unless it's a lob and he missed a couple of those. So it was uh sloppy all around, man. Nobody. Like, I, I mean, Victor Locke and the only reason he didn't have a turnover is because he played like six minutes. Yeah. Everyone else, I think had a turnover on the board. Hey man, the Monstars got locking. I don't know what happened, but confidence is a thing in life. It's everything in life. When you're confident, you're rolling. Once you start to get in your own head, It's bad news, and right now it's bad news for Victor Locke. And zero points once again, that makes it back-to-back games. We were talking beginning of the year, and maybe this makes us an idiot-like podcast, but we were talking beginning of the year, like maybe Victor Locke could be, you know, second team, all Big 12. He could be the star for this team, whatever. Maybe we were thinking a little too highly of him, and it was somewhere in the middle, but he's not this bad. I mean, he is... The, the Monstars got him, man. Like, he is um, – he looks like Stan Podolak out there right now, running around. Um, there, there's a little Space Jam reference, but this isn't him, man. Zero points, one rebound, no nothing. 0 for 2 from the floor. Someone that was your best player entering the Kansas game or your second best player has now been relegated to the bench or delegated. Damn it, I I did it again. We're going with relegated this time. I think I went delegated last time. I don't know. But zero points for Victor Locken, man. What's going on with him right now? Is he going to work his way out of this, or is he not going to get the playing time to work his way out of it? Because he's still starting first and second half. Right, and I think that's a mistake. Um, Yeah, like I said, he had good games against BYU Xavier. It's not like a talent thing that he can't compete against Big 12 teams. I don't believe that. But right now, I, I think the best thing you can do for him, because you're right, he looks lost out there. No confidence around the rim. Um, he's getting a little bit of the Aziz with him where he catches it under the rim and falls over. He did that two games in a row now and tries to launch up a layup. 
but his confidence is gone. And I think Wes needs to help him out, take him off, take him out of the starting lineup. Um, maybe see how the game is going. Like today, I thought it was a, a Jameel Reynolds type of game um, after seeing, you know, Aziz and, and Vic. But let Victor come off the bench, get a few minutes, and hopefully get that that one, that first shot to go in. Because I think he needs it, man. Because he is not this bad. But we don't really have uh, time to waste right now. We, we are in must-win situations. We can't really sit there and let him shoot his way out of this funk because um, we don't really have time to waste, man. We got to win uh, almost every every damn game now. So we don't have time to wait for Victor to figure it out. But I don't know what happened to him. He got sick, and that just screwed him up, man. I mean, it was the prior two, three games before that. You could throw up the stats and, and fact check me here, but he was on a little bit of a decline before that Central Florida game that he missed. But, yeah, you're right. Since then, I mean, it's – Forget the fact, I remember it was the Oklahoma game. We were doing the post-game show. You were live at the arena, and you had mentioned that Victor Locken had scored in double figures like every game that season, and I wanted to correct you on the air, but I, I knew that the band was playing in the background. You probably couldn't hear me, but Locken had seven in that game, and it was like literally the first time he had not scored 10 in a month and a half. And since then, it's been a month and a half where he hasn't scored any points. I mean, you right now, as I'm talking... You th throw up the box score on, on Victor Locke and get me his game log, real time, what he is scoring. I mean, I would say he scored a total of 10 points over his last four or five games. I don't think that's a stretch. Uh, Jizzle James led the way for Cincinnati with 16 points, did have the five turnovers, as I mentioned, but Jizzle, 6 of 10 from the floor, 4 of 6 from 3, 16 for the freshman. When he looks good, he looks good. Seamus Lukosius had 15, Jamil Reynolds had 5. Dan Skillings had 13 on 4 of 11 shooting. He hit two three-pointers in the game. The Bearcats shoot at 9 of 23 from three-point range. That's 39%. 19 of 50 from the floor. That's 38%. 38 and 39 is not going to cut it. Factor in 25 turnovers. And that is how you don't cover the spread. And for the first time in a long time, you don't lose by five. Bearcats fall by nine. Give me the stat on Victor Lockett. Yeah, man, so you're right. So, actually, that Oklahoma game, he had five points, then played at Kansas, uh, was one of six, had seven points. Since then, 18 minutes against West Virginia, 0 for 5, 0 points. 17 minutes against Texas Tech, 1 for 6, 4 points. 13 minutes against Houston, 0 for 4, 0 points. And I don't know if they had the final minutes out for Iowa State, but I'd say it was, right, what, around, you know, 10 minutes at most, 0 for 2, 0 points. So, he's got... Yeah, he's got four points in his last four and um, shooting about 5% from the field. So what is it going to take for West to move him out? You know, you don't want to pile on the kid because I think he's been great for the program. But at what point is West going to have to move off of him as a starting player? Because we start out the game insanely slow. Every Almost every game besides West Virginia, and ironically we ended up losing that one anyway, <laughs> Um, but we start out terribly slow. You need to switch up the starting lineup. I can't believe he went back to it to start the second half. I thought that was a wild move because um, we we already saw what happened. Um, he needs to switch up the lineup, put skillings in there starting and playing damn near the entire game because we, we've seen enough. All right. Have any fans seen enough of Wes Miller? The answer is I hope no. However, hop in the chat room right now and give me his thoughts. Give me the... Give me your thoughts on his coaching job right now. Is he getting a C plus? Are you going to give him a B minus for what he's done this year, hanging in all these close games? Are you going to give him a, a D because he's now lingering towards his third straight missed tournament? We don't do that at Cincinnati. I mean, think of the pressure that Mick Cronin was feeling after that Lance Stevenson team didn't make the tournament. On year four, he had to make it. And then after the fight, I didn't know if Mick was going to make it. Now, Wes is in a completely different situation, A, because we see so much potential from this team. I mean, you're not giving up on Wes until Jizzle James decides to transfer and until, you know, Dan Skillings decides to play in Europe and until some of these young players on this team, you know, would go elsewhere. And if you're in a position where the roster looks awful and next year they can't compete in the Big 12, then it's a different story. I think the eye test tells you that this program is 1,000% on the right track. But they're now 4-7 and seven in the conference – They've lost four or five at home in the Big 12. I mean, at a certain point, 
the coach with the world's longest leash, and it is very long right now for what he's done for this program thus far. I mean, it, just just hop in the chat room if anyone feels differently. I want to see some bantering. That's what this show is about. Yeah, well, we'll see if anybody's uh, you know, got the balls to say something negative about Wes. You know, I'm the number one West guy, but yeah, he's uh, some of the coaching moves, just rotation, um, and just defensively. Like, did he not realize that they were going to trap the the double team in the post? They acted like they had never practiced against it. Granted, Iowa State's defense is elite. I think they're third in in the Ken Palm, so it's not like they they went out there and played some you know subpar defense. They were they were legit all year, um, but it looked like we never practiced against it, um, and. You know, I guess silver lining, we got to see this. C.J. Frederick was rubbing his leg again by the end of the damn game, though. He played like eight minutes, and I'm like, is he hurt again? Because seeing him come in, I, I loved it. He never I don't even think he got to shoot a, a three or attempt to one, except for the, maybe the very end if he got in there. Um, but, yeah, Wes, he's got he's to make coaching adjustments, man. That's what it's all about. But right now, the talent level is high. You got guys like Jizzle James, Betsy, he's recruiting – top level players um and who else do you want right? it's faith want man it's faith right now we have faith in Wes miller nothing on the floor that we saw tonight is like all right this is you know someone that it's recency bias because five days ago i would have told you after that texas tech win that Wes is you know crown him give him the statue right now put him right next to fickle now not fickle but put the statue out there. Wes is the coach of the future, and I still think so. But at a certain point, when did we accept this many losses at home in a five-game stretch? I know it's the Big 12, completely different conference. And fact-checking myself, Spurlock is right. Um, and congratulations for winning that game a couple of weeks ago, Spur. I thought you were going to be going for about two weeks there before you guys finally got it done. But to weave the train back on the tracks... It was year five that Mick Cronin finally made the tournament. But I think there were people in year four when he had Stevenson and that team was struggling a bit um, that said, this guy's got talent. He, you know, can't figure it out. At, at what point do we move on? There were a lot of people that, you know, were against Cronin there for a little and said, get him the hell out of here. A lot of those Huggy fans walked away from the program, didn't want Mick to get the job in the first place. Everyone has welcomed West with open arms. They're selling out every single game. There's hype. There's talent. Now we need wins because there were a lot of freaking boos in that arena tonight. So clearly there are some unhappy Bearcat fans. Yeah. Uh, allegedly they were booing Kirk Herbstreet when they, when they introduced him. And nobody's safe. When you have 25 turnovers, nobody in the stadium's safe. Everybody's getting booed. Um, but yeah, losing this many at home is, is really the most shocking thing. If we would have split a lot of the ones on the road in the big 12, it'd be totally understandable. But very odd not be able to get the, the guys up for home games and, and starting out so slow. Must win game, and, and they were just just sleepwalking, man. Like Locken, who, who's been the, the spark plug and an energizer bunny a lot of times. I mean, that Oklahoma game you went to, Houdini, I know he didn't score the 10 points of the game, but he had like five, six blocks. Remember that? He was everywhere. Right. What happened to that Victor Locken? Like tonight, you forget he's even on the floor. Yeah, you, he lost the confidence, man. It's 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 hard when you when you see it like this. It's usually not this obvious, but you can just see it in his eyes, man. It doesn't look like he even wants to be out there. He's not going. He's not attacking the glass at all. He's not. He's not really doing anything. It's it's super. It's it's really bizarre. It's bizarre, uh, man. What, what we're it, seeing because he was always even when we sucked ass. Victor Locken was fired up. Like it looked like he was about to fist fight the entire team or or the ref or be crying every time they called a foul on him he was emotional and now you don't see anything there's nothing there yeah i don't know what's going on man but um he has not been himself the last couple of weeks cincinnati falls again this is where that west virginia loss really hurts because now you have uh, central florida you have oklahoma state both those must wins bearcats haven't won back-to-back -back big 12 games in their short little history they're gonna have to do that right now they're gonna have to beat kansas state they are going to have to beat West Virginia at home. They're going to have to win those four to get them to eight, and then they're probably going to have to win another game on the road, whether it's TCU, Oklahoma, or Houston. Um, they may have to win a couple. I mean, 
Iowa State, that's not a loss that's going to hurt your net. That's not a loss that's going to do anything to your resume in a bad way. But you're running out of opportunities for good wins. You need you can't go seven and eleven and get in the tournament. If you're eight and ten, potentially, but with the non conference slate that Cincinnati had, it wasn't great. Let's not forget. They were playing a bunch of bunch of cupcakes with extra icing. I, I think mean, they need some nine. Merrimack, some Stetsons and uh, Evansville's back to back. So they probably need that nine win mark. And, you know, they got West Virginia, they got Oklahoma State. UCF is not gonna be a walk in the park. They win all three of those. That's seven. Kansas State, that would make it eight. And then you look at that Houston, TCU, and Oklahoma. So they're not dead yet. They're not dead yet. But with the way they played tonight at home in a road game at Central Florida that I'm not feeling good about at all, I think Central Florida is going to be two-and-a-half-point favorites entering that game. And if the Knights take down UC, it's season over, man. It's a it's another year where the Bearcats are not going dancing. We're going to have to follow the Bobcats, see if they can win the MAC. <laughs> Yeah, no. If they lose, if they lose any of the next two games, UCF and uh, Oklahoma State, it, we're done. Um, but yeah, they're gonna have to probably get two on the road because they they blew every opportunity they had at home, man. And fifth third was rocking. I thought maybe you know every time I've been in the game, we've lost. I thought maybe we switch up the mojo. I stay at home today. We still lose. We actually had our worst performance. So we're gonna have to steal one, um, probably two on the road, or do some serious damage in the Big Twelve tournament. Um, cause <laughs> you're going to have an opportunity for multiple quad one wins in the big 12 tournament too. So let's not forget that that'll all be part of this. Um, but we've been saying it every game. I feel like another blown opportunity. I actually felt pretty confident. Turns out my confidence means absolutely nothing. Yeah. How was UC favored in this game? I mean, it didn't look, I thought it was a trap. It didn't look like for one second that Cincinnati was the better team than Iowa State. And there's been a lot of moments this year against Kansas, stretches, against Xavier, a stretch, against uh, Dayton to start the game when the Cats were up like 10-2, against Houston for stretches, against Baylor for multiple stretches. Like, there have been times where Cincinnati has looked like the better team and, and you saw that if they're clicking, like, maybe this team could be really good. Tonight, they looked bad. They looked like um, one of the worst teams in the Big 12, and record-wise, they are. Let's call a spade a spade. Well, We're watching one of the worst teams in the Big 12 right now um, that's in a fight for, you know, the, the bottom three spots in the conference. I mean, they shot, which is unbelievable. They shot 40%, 39% from three, 70% from the line. We've been praying to God that they could do this in a, a single Big 12 game, and they do it. But – they add on 25 turnovers. In, in reality, they should have lost this game by 30 points. You can't – I mean, they're turning the ball over almost every other possession, which is very difficult to do. Um, so, bravo to them. That's got to be, I, I would say, probably top 10 turnovers in a single game this year, if I had to just guess, if I was a betting man. So, you, you got to clean it up. That's from the top down, the point guards down to Aziz Bandago, down to the coaching staff. Um Really piss poor, man. Very disappointing. Yeah, opportunities. West Virginia, Oklahoma State, two. Uh, aside from that, I'm not feeling good about Kansas State. I'm not feeling good about it. any of these teams anymore. So uh, we'll, we'll see what they can do. Around the Big 12, BYU leading UCF right now 17-10. Feels like uh, an eternity ago when Cincinnati went into Provo and we were chanting Final Four. And then Baylor's playing Oklahoma tonight. The score right now on that one in the first half is 12-9. to Next up for Cincinnati, we mentioned it, it's Central Florida. Bearcats beat them last time without Victor Locken. Um, that was a huge loss at the time. Now, if you said without Victor Locken, uh, after playing, what, five, six minutes tonight, you wouldn't think too much of it. Um, the bad news for Cincinnati, on the other side, the Knights were missing – two of their starters in the last game. So Cincinnati beat UCF at half strength, and um, now they're going to get them at full strength on the road in Orlando. Not going to be fun. The The big bright spot for me today, uh, a couple of them, Dan Skillings, he's everywhere at all times. He's getting rebounds. Um, his, his shot's starting to fall a little bit more. Still looks good in the transition, just has to get it under control a little bit more. And speaking of getting it under control, and once he does it, he's going to be – Incredible. 
Jizzle James. Three-pointer was going down tonight. Had one where he gave the dude a little stiff arm. Guy fell on his ass. Step back three. Perfect swish. The Jizz Man got everyone up. The Jizz Man, baby! Jizzle James. And then um, hit a couple threes. Hit, hit four of them in the game, actually. That's got to be a career high for Jizzle. Got to the rim a few times, but um, some sloppy play. That's expected from a freshman. I will say this. Reminds me a lot of a young Davion Mitchell who started Baylor, now plays for the Sacramento Kings. So the trajectory is there for a lot of these young players. Skilling's a sophomore. Um, the, the freshman, Jizzle James. And um, uh, aside from that, I usually say John Newman. You know, Lukosius was good tonight, but I usually say John Newman's name. John Newman was non-existent. Did he even score? I didn't even see him take a shot. Two free throws, I think. Yeah, yeah, two free throws, uh, 0 for 3, six boards. He had some good defensive stuff that he did in the in that first half to get us, I think, the lead at one point. Um, but, yeah, it was a slow day for, for John. You're right. I, I mean, the, the silver lining is always that – our young guys, I mean, everybody would be coming back next year if we don't have transfers besides uh, John Newman and C.J. Frederick, which, you know, John Newman's obviously been huge. Frederick's been hurt all year. If these guys can keep developing and we don't have, you know, eight guys transfer like we did with the the Brandon era, which I, I, I don't think will happen because everybody seems to love Wes, that's the good news. The, the bad news is – it, it sucks to be this close, man. And I feel like we're, we're right there. We're a player or two away in almost every one of these games. This one kind of was an anomaly here where we, we kind of got blown out start to finish, really. It ended up being nine, but should have been 40, in my opinion. Um, but you got to win these games. At some point, you know, the moral victory or the moral season, it almost is going in that direction where we just say, hey, we're on the, we're on the uptick, no, man. We're no, on the uptick. No, no we're talking we top 15 programs. Once we get to that mark – to where we're talking, we're on the uptick. Oh, we're on the uptick. We're in second to last place in the Big 12, but we're hanging around. Once we get to that point, screw it. What are we doing? I'll go find a new hobby. If we're going to get to that point, and that's why fans in Fifth Third Arena that pack their ass in there and love this team, that's why they're booing. That's why they're booing this play because we expect more than that. This is a program that two decades ago sent their players to the auxiliary locker room. They said, hey, Max Seal, you're not getting your locker today, buddy. You're going to the auxiliary locker room. Um, Huggins really did that. And, and I think after a performance like that, it's the only thing Wes Miller can do. I know he wasn't happy with the refs, but at the end of the game, you saw the frustration in his face. This was just a team in a must-win game at home that was not prepared at all and looked terrible. They, they, let's call a spade a spade. Cincinnati sure. looked uh, atrocious. They, they looked horrible. They did. I mean, should he pull one out of a uh, mix playbook and do open tryouts tomorrow for the entire university? I think he might send a message. Be like, we're doing open tryouts tomorrow. Okay. Everyone's got to earn their Jersey on this. Team. I miss the Mick press one man. Like what Wes yeah, is, he just, he'll, he'll give you a lot of, I, I'm, this is the best crowd in America. And I'm really sorry that we couldn't get it done, but we're going to get there by God. If I go down in the grave, trying, we are going to get there. Mick would just go out there and bash every single player on his team. He'd be like, this locking guy sucks. Like, I don't even know why I gave him a scholarship. Like, he would legit do that. Um, missed that fire a little bit in the post-game press conferences, but uh, do like the fact that everyone seems to rally around Wes. They haven't gone down without a fight pretty much all season, but tonight there, there wasn't a lot of fight there. I mean, it was um, not fundamentally sound. I guess the one thing you can hang your hat on if you're a Bearcats fan is – uh, I mean, they're still hustling. At the end of the day, rebounds is the only way to – not the only way, but a, a big part of seeing if your team is uh, mentally there. And uh, they out-rebounded Iowa State 38-24. to They out-rebounded the Cyclones by 14 on the glass and still got their asses handed to them at home. Uh, that's that's unpreparedness. That's that's not your guys not having the energy in the, in the fight in a must-win game. It's It's straight up they were not prepared. That's got to be on the coach at the end of the day. My TED Talk is over. Yeah, I, like I was saying earlier, it's on it's on everybody. I mean, some of this stuff is, hey, are you a college Division One basketball player? Well, yeah, you, you don't just dribble the ball into the other guy. We had like three of those in a row. I'm like, where are you even attempting to put this basketball? Um, and it always seems like when we're playing any team, really, 
the other team can finish at the rim on those very difficult – I'm not saying any of this stuff is easy, but they put the ball in the hoop. We launch it off the backboard. I mean, Skilling's had a few tonight, um, and I, I like that he attacks the rim, but we don't seem to finish it, and the other teams do, and that's that's the difference between, you know, when you lose by five to ten points, a lot of those are those, you know, three-footers that you miss, and we tend to miss them a lot. So we got to figure it out. We say this every damn week. We got more opportunities coming up, but we've blown – God, we have blown a lot, man. And you can't do it at Fifth Third Arena. We need Mick Cronin to do the tryouts. At least yes. threaten it. And Wes needs to put the guys in the auxiliary locker room until they – but, I mean, what can he get on them for? Playing dumb? Because they're playing hard. I mean, there's never a so, lack of fight. No, this is my question to you, though, because the one thing I, I didn't love about Mick – was one turnover you'd see him just sitting there and just run over to the bench and throw another guy in he'd take a guy out the second he turned the ball over now Wes opposite does the exact opposite exact opposite almost to a detriment though he'll let a guy turn the ball over five times in a row and you know after two I'm like get his ass out he they, they need to understand hey I can't just be this sloppy with the basketball and still be on the court so I think he needs to be, discipline the players a little bit as far as hey, if you're going to turn the ball over, you're not coming in. You're not going to be playing 30 minutes a game. It's not going to happen. And I, clearly, they don't believe that because he doesn't yank them until they do it like six times in a row. No, there was a point in the game where Jizzle, I think, hit two straight threes, and when he didn't hit a three, it was a second after a shot clock violation that he fired one up there, and it, it still went in. And at that point, I'm like, this is the Jizzle James game, which it was. He had 16 points to lead the team. Uh, he was he was getting his shot off at will, whereas everyone else was turning the ball over. A jizzle included. He had he had five of them, but a couple of them were late in the game. Um, with that being said, he takes out Jizzle in the middle of a quick little Jizz Man six nothing run. The Jizz Man had a six nothing run. They took him out and um, put in Day Day Thomas, and right away it was the play where Day Day just in the backcourt gave it right to Iowa State for a, a fast break layup the other way, and I said get him out of there. I know you just took Jizzle out. Pull the mick, run down the bench, put him right back in there. And then five, ten minutes later, he puts Jizzle back in the game, and, and Jizzle does the exact same thing, just dribbling for about five straight minutes. I'm like, he's going to lose it. He's going to lose it. He finally gets it under control. And then once he gets it under control, he has his candy picked. So um, overall, it was just one of those games. This hasn't really been a turnover prone team for the most part this season especially in the non-conference like they were they were turning it over eight nine times a game it felt like the thing was they weren't turning the opposition over either it was just kind of like they they weren't good they well, weren't they were bad playing there Stetson was, out of conference how many times they turned it over in that one Stetson I don't know they're playing Stetson I don't I mean they they'd probably turn the ball over 10 times against Mount St. Joe the way they were playing today um a lot of it, you got to give credit to Iowa State's defense. Like I said, I mean they're they're, they're, they're good. loaded. They know what they're, they're good. Doing. You're, you're, they, they, you're, you're thinking they're going to be a Final Four team. I mean, screw it. Yeah, Iowa State. I mean, because typically when you see that double team and and our big guys, the one thing, a couple things they struggle with is making those quick decisions. And every big guy when they got doubled, they panicked. I mean, they did not know where to go with the ball. And credit to Iowa State. I just wish we were a little bit more prepared to adjust on that double team. Um, but, yeah, Iowa State's a damn good team, man. That might be the best team in the Big 12. No doubt about it. Final score, Cincinnati loses at home 68-59. to 59. They fall to 15-9 on the did. season. 4-7 and seven in the conference. We're not given the eulogy for the season yet. There's still a lot of games to be played. But we said this was a must-win game, and they lost it. So we got to stick to that. Season's over. Until next week, when they play the Central Florida Knights, or I should say this weekend, in Orlando, if they win that one, there's a pulse. Bearcats lose. It's 1,000% over. So that's where we stand. We can uh, pipe down the Sarah McLaughlin and hopefully in two weeks get that Da, 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 the slipper still fits. Um, until then, that's all I got, man. Final words. 
I'm begging we better see a different starting lineup next week. I, I'm begging you, Wes, if we do anything, just switch it up. Switch up the mojo. We've been starting slow. Bring Victor off the bench for his sake. Let him watch the game flow a little bit and then jump in there and maybe he can get his confidence back. That's all I'm asking, but we got some work to do, man. 11,819 right showed up to Fifth Third Arena to watch the Bearcats turn it over 25 times, lose by nine points, and um, see their season shift in a big way. I mean, they were last, or I guess first four out. You would have to imagine that... Um, Here's the thing. I, we, we keep talking like season's over. That that loss does nothing for your resume. It's more so the fact that with the way they've played tonight and, and just the amount of games that they've lost at home, I don't think this is a team that's going to win eight games in this conference. It's as simple as that. But in terms of losing to Iowa State, hell, Joey Brackets may come up with a, a midweek bracket tomorrow. We, we may still be in that first four out line. Like, this doesn't kill you by any means. This is an Oklahoma State. That's a top 10 team we just lost to at home. It's the way they lost to them. It's the vibe right now. It's the Monstars getting Victor Locken and taking his talent. Um, we're in a bad spot, man. And we've done way too many of these shows. I mean, dating back to football season, for God's sake. I had to go out there. You didn't even join me, Houdini. You said, I'm going to take this year off. Scott Satterfield's team clearly took the season off, so I'm just going to have fun on Saturdays. Chuck, you can do every show by yourself. It was brutal, man. It was brutal. I just went out there and bitched for a half hour every single time. Um, this season, Bearcats have given me hope. No hope right now. Um, I, I said final thoughts. I'll give you one last word, and then we'll uh, shout out the chat room as we dip. Um, yeah, chat, shout out the chat room. Molly loves when you say uh, the jizz man. We might actually have to bleep that out moving forward just from a YouTube censorship se uh, standpoint. Um, but, yeah, but no, appreciate it. We had a it's nickname, jizz man. Cheers, man, for three. <laughs> the thing is that the nice thing, regardless of, of what we've seen in this roller coaster and, and, and what they put me through, because today tonight was was brutal to watch, truly. Even though we lost by nine, it was a brutal game to watch. You can see that the, the excitement for UC basketball is back, and we did not have that for the last few years, especially the Brandon era and the last couple in the American. It just wasn't the same. And you could see the, the passion that the fan base has, man. Even at, when you're at Fifth Third Arena or sitting in my living room, the passion is back. Um, so that's the bright side that we have. But we got some work to do. The angry fans are back, right? They're, for the longest yeah. time, it felt like you were watching games in the American. And, yeah, the, the fan base was good. The support was great. But the anger that was there, that, that you know, that palpable buzz, I guess you could say, that, that hostileness that was in the crowd just ready to boo the refs every five seconds of the game and, and quite frankly, boo their own team if they didn't get what they paid for. It's back, man. That's Bearcat basketball. I yeah. love that. Um, I, I don't like it when the fans are literally booing for 60% of the game at their own team because of the performance they, they put out there. But, hey, I believe in Wes. I'll say it again. But um, the guy's got the world's longest leash, and as of right now, it's still a C coaching job. I mean, until he um, – proves that he can win some games at home I, i'm indifferent i'm indifferent with a lot of faith let's just say that central florida man let's do it central florida must win must See win everyone every day uh, if you miss some of the show it'll drop on the uh, podcast app in the morning let's uh finish the show for the morning as everyone dips out all right, that does it for uh, Chatterbox Bearcats. Hey, give it a five-star right now. We don't have enough five-star reviews. If you like the show, hop on Spotify, hop on Apple Podcasts, subscribe if you aren't already subscribed, and give it that five-star review. Leave a comment. Say, Houdini's got a great shaped head. Give him something. Jizzman for three! See you, Houdini. Later.